Hi, I'm Mike Ward. I want to take you into the next step. Once you've understood the principles of calculating NPVs, one needs to understand when to use them and what works and doesn't work. And we call this type of analysis capital budgeting. It's where we're making long-term decisions about buying big assets more than one year. And this is a much better met metric, the NPV, than you know uh, what we were doing before with ROE and so on, which measures a single year. So here's a problem for you. Uh, and you can try this if you want. Um, Beta products have got two investment opportunities. Project A requires an upfront investment of 50,000 and then produces annual cash flows of 15,000 for six years. B requires an investment of 75,000 and produces annual cash flows of 22,000 for six years as well. If the cost of capital, that's the discount rate, is 15%, which project should they invest in? Assume the projects are mutually exclusive. Now, what that means is that you have to choose A or B because otherwise you might do them both. But many projects, you're either going to build it with a nuclear power station, say, or it's going to be coal fired. You're not going to do both. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, you can pause the video if you want and actually try this because you should be able to do this type of problem. It's pretty simple in Excel. Now, I'm showing you now the solution to that problem. Here's project A, and you can see there the cash flows at the top, the investment of 50,000, 15,000 per year is the cash flow for six years. You can work out the NPV of this. I've called this the PVB, the present value of the benefit of the project. That is the, the present value of, of the future cash flows, excluding the present value of the investment here. And that minus that is what gives you the NPV. And I've done the same for project B. There are the cash flows, and that's the present value of the benefit. That's the present value of the investment, and there's the NPV. Now the question is, okay, they both produce positive NPVs, therefore, which one are you going to choose? A or B? Now it's some people are going to say, well, we should go for, for B. It's got the higher NPV. But other people are going to sit there looking at this and they're going to realize, wow, well, uh, you're putting in much more money here. You have to invest 75, whereas you're only investing 50 here. And maybe we should calculate the return on the investment. And so you can do that. And here I'm doing it. Here is the return. Now to calculate this return, here are the formulas. I have taken the NPV and divided it by what was invested, and you get 13.5%. That's, that's sometimes called the cost-benefit ratio. The other way of doing this is to use a different measure of return, the internal rate of return. And to do that, here's the formula here. You use an Excel function, the internal rate of return, put in the brackets, and then you highlight all the cash flows across here, and you get a different answer. It's going to be 19.9 uh, and once you've done it for project A you can copy and paste this down here for project B and what you'll observe is that the NPV gives you the better answer for uh, it's, it's suggesting you should go for project B whereas the return is suggesting you should go for project A so often of course we get the same outcome both, both our matrix, the NPV and the IRR, are pointing to the same project. That's usually the case. But in this particular example, I'm giving you one where uh, NPV chooses this project and working out the return, however you do it, gives you the other project, gives you project A. So which one should you go for? Now, many people think you should use the return, but actually you shouldn't. You should always go for money in your pocket. Although we have invested more money into project B and therefore the return looks lower, it gives us actually a higher value that we've created by doing the same project. So in theory, we really should choose B. You'd rather, and don't forget, although we have actually uh, invested more money into project B, we have been able to uh, we haven't ignored that fact in terms of doing the calculations here. 
we've taken into account the fact that we put in a bigger investment here and it's still giving us a bigger NPV. What worries people is, well, where would you get the extra money? If you need only 50,000 uh, for A, how are you going to get the extra 25? Well, if, if these projects are delivering a good return, which they are, you should get this money. It shouldn't be a problem in theory. So that's the way it works. Now, I'm just summarizing these numbers here. This is what we call the return. Sometimes it's, it's technically called the profitability index. And uh, you can see it's got various names here. And this is the internal rate of return. And uh, you can see there are some issues with the internal rate of return calculation. That's why we don't always like to use it. This is the key point, though. If in doubt, use NPV. That's the way to go. Now, sometimes people use another metric. They use one called payback. I'm sure you're familiar with this. This measures the time in years to get your money back. And if I were to show you a little example here, you can see Project A requires you to invest 100,000 and then you get 25,000 Rand each year for six years. Project B, you're also going to invest 100,000. In the first year, you get nothing back and then nothing again in the second year. Then you get 50 and 50 and so on. Now, which is going to be the better project to choose? Well, if you use payback, you can see in project A, the payback is you've, you've spent 100,000 and it's going to take you four years to get your money back. In project B, it's the same actually. But which one are you going to go for? Now, sometimes people choose A because they realize that the time value of money is not included in this, this, these simple cash flows that we put over here. And so you, you start getting your money earlier. But they're missing a really big problem here. And that is that Project B has got a very big set of cash flows after the payback. So in a, in a way, it's kind of like going fishing. When you go fishing, you don't just want to get the bait back. This is the bait, what you, what you invested. You actually want to get a fish. And payback has that problem. It ignores the fish. So we would sometimes adjust this and do what we call discounted payback where we, we deal with the time value of money here. We put the present values here. Uh, and still, it's got the limitation, though, that it tends to ignore the fish. So I've just put some shortcomings up. You can have a look at these in more detail if you want to, and some redeeming qualities. Essentially, it's a very simple methodology. On the whole, though, we're going to stick to NPV. Now, I wanted to show you some problems with these big investments that people make. And almost always we find that these large projects are over budget and late. And here's some examples. This is the new airport that they've been building in Berlin. And you can read that the CEO is sacked again and the project is five years behind and billions of euros over budget. And this, this I cut out two years ago. And I still don't think this airport is actually properly operational. Here's the Olympics, for example. We should be so glad that South Africa never uh, got awarded the Olympics because you can see this is Oxford's business school here. They did analysis and they, they say none of the games came within the initial budget. More than half exceeded the budget by more than 100%. And we know what the Soccer World Cup did to us. We got a bunch of stadiums which we hardly use when we really needed roads and hospitals and schools. Poor countries like ours cannot afford these things. I think I was the only person in South Africa say, please don't let us win the Soccer World Cup in 2010, but we did. Here's some more. This is a big Finnish nuclear power plant, 5 billion euros over budget. Wow, I mean, and it's nine years behind schedule. This is the, uh, this is what's happened to the cost of the new uh, underground uh, that's been planned for, for London, for example. And uh, this is when they first did their economic case. They said it's going to cost 40 billion and then it went up to 50. And now it's looking at more than 120 billion on this. And it's going to end up costing much more than that. You watch. Boris has just given the go ahead on this, but it'll cost much more. Here's some of our own. Sassel have been in the news a lot because of their late Charles project, which has gone so wrong. 
And then, of course, they've had the oil crisis. We can't blame them entirely for that. But this project, again, the costs just doubled. And uh, you recognize that? That's Madupi. And uh, so it's been delayed for years. It's, it's you know, still giving us problems. And, you know, there's so much has been written about ESCOM. Disaster of epic proportions. And what are we going to do about it now? Well, the whole case studies we can talk about over here. Uh, I don't know whether you know, but in 2001, ESCOM was voted by the Financial Times, my favorite newspaper, as the world's number one power company. And it won the prize for the best international power company. Boy, we've fallen so far since then over the last 20 years. So you can see here, I don't even want to say more about ESCOM. But it's not just that. Here is the Durban to Joburg pipeline, uh, which brings up fuel. It's called the multi-product pipeline now. And I was working for doing some work for the, the for NERSA at the time when this came about. And I remember them coming along and saying to us, this would cost 8 billion rand. But OK, by the time I got the, the go ahead, it was already 13, but it ended up costing 30. And it came in instead of four years, it came in at nine years. So what I'm getting at is that these things always, almost always are over budget and late. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do them. I still remember the Gauw train, for example, where Jack van der Merwe, the project manager who used to be in my class many years ago, stood up on national television, put his hands across his heart and said, I promise you, South Africa, the Gauw train will not cost us more than 25 billion. Well, I knew he was lying and I think he knew he was lying and it did cost us more than 25 billion. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't have done it. We, there's some things you must do. And the others you mustn't, like World Cups and Olympics and those kinds of things. So here is a problem for you to do now. And to do this problem, you're going to have to understand a little bit about working out cash flows. So I'm going to leave this for you to look at. I want you to try it first of all. You might want to watch the next little clip on capital on cash flows and capital budgeting and give it a go. And then I'll do another quick video, which will show you how to work this out. I hope you find that interesting.